In this lesson, we're going to talk about graphing polynomial functions. And in general, they look like this, some function where you have some coefficient times a power of x plus another coefficient times another power of x, usually in decreasing order, uh, so that at the very end you have a lone constant term. Now some subsets that we know of, of course, we know the linear, the quadratic, and the cubic are all polynomial. And if you know what these three parent functions look like, that'll help us when we talk about something called uh, behavior at the roots. Parent linear looks like that. Parent quadratic is the parabola. And if you don't remember the parent cubic, the parent cubic, y equals x cubed, looks a little something like that. Okay, so a few things to remember about polynomial functions and their graphs. First, they are never going to have an asymptote. And then the domain for all these functions is going to be all reals. Now when we talk about the graphs, there are really three things we need to, to explore when we're graphing a polynomial function. And these are the three aspects. First is behavior at roots. Uh, we have something called n behavior. And there's this thing called a local extrema, which I'll talk about briefly. But in order to find them, you really have to know calculus first. So let's talk about root behavior. And remember, a root for a function is where the graph hits the x-axis. So I've drawn some x-axes and labeled three different types of roots. We have single roots, even powered roots, and odd roots. So remember when we solved polynomials and I made you label any root that showed up more than once? Well, this is when you need to know that, uh, when you're graphing, because the way the function travels through the root depends on the power of the root. So if I have a single root, and let's call it r1, and so my factor is x minus r1, it's linear, it's only to the first power, that graph is just going to cross through it. And it really has two ways of crossing through it. It's either going to cross uh, increasing like that, or it's going to cross through decreasing like that. Now if I look at even roots, so if I have x minus the root to some even power, then what I'm going to have is a tangency at the root. So if I say this is my root 1, what I mean by tangent, I mean that the function is going to hit the root and then come back up. Or it's going to come from the other direction, meaning it's going to be below. It's going to come up to the root and then come back down. So one of those two things is going to happen. And if I have an odd root, if this is root 1, then what I have uh, is something that I'm going to refer to as a wiggle. It's going to go through, give a little wiggle at the root, and then come back up. So instead of just going straight through, there's a little wiggle as it goes through the root. And you either have an increasing wiggle or you're going to have a decreasing wiggle, like so. And so single roots just cross through, even roots are tangent, and odd roots have a wiggle. So if you remember what I said about the parent functions helping you out, you think about this root, this root's really a linear root, so it's gonna cross through like a line would. Um, this one, even root, is kinda like a parabola, meaning an x squared, whose vertex was just on the x-axis. And the odd ones that are greater than one, like third powers, act like cubics, meaning they're not gonna cross straight through. It goes through and sort of swerves up through that root. So this exponent on my root not only tells me whether it crosses as tangent or wiggles, if I look at these two in particular, the higher the degree, the flatter the tangency or the flatter the wiggle. Um, so let's compare, you know, the square to a sixth power. So I'm comparing two even degrees. So if I look at these two graphs, this wider one is the quadratic, this skinnier one is the sixth degree. So if I go in and I zoom in at where that root is, You see the second graph on there was the x to the sixth power, and it seems a little bit wider at that root. And I can look at the table, and I can see that clearly, because at the x value of 2, the y values are identical. They're both 1. But if I look at it in increments of tenths, this one, the x squared, is decreasing much slower than this one. See, at, at 2.1, this is 0.81, so that's pretty close to 1, but this one's at 0.53, so it's closer to half. And if I go closer to the actual root, 
this one jumps into scientific notation, so it's really, really close to zero. And it's because I'm raising some number that's already close to zero to a really high power, um, so that means it gets even closer to zero. And that's what causes the flatness. And the same thing's gonna happen if I change this to, say, a cube versus a ninth, and I graph close to the root, that's the one that's cubic, and then I look at the one that's ninth, See, it, it's, it hugs the x-axis much closer as it goes through that root. And if I go to the table and I check, see, once again, these numbers stay really close to zero for the ninth degree one for a lot longer. The higher the degree for even or odd, it's going to hug the x-axis uh, for longer than it would if it was just, you know, a square or a cube. When you're asked to analyze the end behavior of a function, whether it's a polynomial, exponential, whatever, you basically have to answer this same question every single time. What happens to f of x or the y value as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity? And it's very predictable for a polynomial. The way to determine it really is to sort of use your imagination. So let's look at a very familiar example. What happens as x gets super, 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 super huge? So if I think about x equals 100 million, so that's a pretty big number. And I think about this function value at 100 million. And so if I think about what has the biggest effect on the y value, it is definitely not that one, nor is it that x. It's this x squared that's going to have the biggest impact on the y value. When you're analyzing a polynomial for n behavior, all you care about is the highest degree term because it is the term that has the biggest impact on the function value. Now, we like to look for patterns and really there aren't very many different things that can happen in terms of n behavior and a polynomial. So let's look at the very well-known x squared and look at its n behavior. So as x approaches positive infinity going this direction, the y value grows without bound and approaches positive infinity. And if I go x is negative infinity, what happens to the y value? Well, it also grows without bound, and it approaches positive infinity. So let's change the degree up to a third degree now, and let's see what happens to the graph. So this is still increasing, but now it's decreasing on this side. So now if I go and I change that to a fourth degree, let's see what happens when it's a fourth degree. It's increasing and then increasing. So let's see what happens to the fifth degree it was decreasing and then increasing. And so you might have, might have noticed a pattern, but that's actually not enough because notice that these are positive. If I change this sign to negative and I go back to x squared, then it's decrease, decrease. If I change it to x cubed, it's increase and then decrease. If I change it to x to the fourth, you can predict what's gonna happen. It's gonna be decrease, decrease. And you can predict what's gonna happen when I change it to x to the fifth, it's going to be increase and then decrease. So to summarize end behavior of a polynomial, we have four options. And the only thing you have to look at is that highest degree term, a sub n, x to the n. And so the way I always remembered this was to remember what happens with quadratics and cubics. So I have behavior that's increasing and increasing. So this is approaching the negative infinity, and this is, as x approaches the positive infinity, we have increase on both sides, like y equals x squared. And so for this case, a sub n, the coefficient, has to be greater than zero, and n has to be even, okay? And so then, if I wanna look at the version that's going down down as x approaches infinity, as x approaches negative infinity. This one is like y equals negative x squared, so your a sub n value is less than zero and your n value is even, okay? And so the counterpart, of course, are the odds. So the one that goes down and then up as x approaches infinity, negative infinity, this one is like y equals x cubed, a sub n is greater than zero, and n is odd. 
And that's also true for linear functions too. Um, this is just a regular increasing linear function. It has the same end behavior, right? And so then you can have the other option, which is it's increasing in this direction and decreasing in this direction. So as x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity, like y equals negative x cubed, this time a sub n is less than 0 and n is odd. So now we're going to talk very briefly about local extrema. When I have something that's a cubic that goes like this, this maximum value here and that minimum value there, those are local extrema. So knowing how high up a little bump goes or how low a little bump goes in a polynomial is all about finding local extrema. And you need to know about this thing called the derivative in order to find them. So when we graph a polynomial function, it's going to be a sketch. And so our y-axes are going to be super vague. Our x-axes are going to be super specific. But our y-axis isn't going to tell us what those max or min values are. I want to sketch f of x equals x squared, x minus 3 cubed, and x plus 4. So in order to do that, I have to know root behavior and end behavior. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the roots as points. The second thing I need to figure out is I need to figure out end behavior. Now, I'm given something in factored form, so I don't have that uh, highest degree term, but I can figure out what it's going to be. So I have a positive x that's being squared, or and then I have this x, and it's also positive, and that x is going to be positive. So I know the leading term is going to be some positive x, and then I can just add up the exponents. That's going to create a squared term. This is going to create an x cubed, and this is going to create an x. So I have a 2 plus 3 plus 1, or x to the 6th. Okay. So I have a positive x to the 6th, which is even, right? So I have an even number. And even means I need to think about what happens if it were like a, a, po a positive parabola. So the end behavior is going to be up and then up. So now all I have to do is fill in a graph that's going to have the correct type of behavior through the roots. So I start off up here, and I go to my first root, which is x plus 4. And that's a single root, so it just crosses through it. So I'm just going to cross through that root. And then I go to my ne next root, which is 0. And that's a square, so that tells me it's tangent. So it's going to come down to some point that I don't know yet, uh, and it's going to go up to the 0 and then come back down. And then now I look at the cube uh, of x minus 3, and cubes mean wiggles. So as I come back up to this, to this root here, I need to kind of wiggle, to wiggle. Don't go straight through, wiggle, and then connect up with that uh, other increasing side. Now, I don't know how low this goes. I don't know which one's lower than the other one. And I don't really don't care about that. Um, so I want to see that wiggle. I want to see that tangent. I want to see that cross through. What I can't figure out yet is this lowest value and that lowest value because that requires calculus. And if I want to double check, I can check my calculator. And I see it's tangent, little wiggle. So I got that part right. So that's the kind of sketching I want. Notice I don't have a y-axis. And here's what you do for the y-axis. You just put a y-axis on there and you leave it blank because you don't know those lowest values yet. So you can't add anything on there. You may be asking, okay, what's the point of this? How is this at all useful to me? Well, if I asked you to solve um, a polynomial inequality like 0 is greater than or equal to this polynomial, remember how you had to break up the number line by the roots and you had to test points? Well, you don't have to do that if you can sketch this graph. So just by knowing the end behavior and knowing how it reacts between the roots, you can actually answer this question without ever having to do a single calculation. So you don't have to square anything, cube anything, or anything like that. I can determine visually where the function is greater than zero and where the function is less than zero. Without having to do any calculations whatsoever, um, I can answer this question right here.